the GOC under Archbishop Kalinikos has gone into communion with the Senate in resistance, a deposed, uncanonical, and schismatic Senate founded by the thrice deposed Metropolitan Kiprian of Philly. Metropolitan Kiprian was deposed two times by the Old Calendar Church of Greece and one time by the State Church of Greece. One of the reasons he was deposed from the or deposed by the Old Calendar Church of Greece is because he gave communion to new calendarists. And here we have the GOC hypocritically giving communion to new calendarists in direct violation of the Old Calendar Church Protocol 13 and the GOC's 2002 encyclical, which absolutely in categorical black and white terms forbids that action. No exceptions are allowed whatsoever. In orthodoxy, we do not have the right to maintain a belief or practice that is in opposition to the official decision of the church. These clergy could not cut off their will and they were disobedient. And I predicted that this would lead to a union with the Senate resistance and it did. Okay. So I want to share something here. I contacted S. Figmental Monastery one time there in the GOC. And I told them that logically, Metropolitan Paulo's action of giving communion to new calendarists implies logically that he holds to the ecclesiology of Metropolitan Cyprian of Philae. And one of their monks responded to me in a postcard and said, they are aware of, of what Metropolitan Paulus is doing. It's wrong, but he's not a Cyprianite. Cyprianite is a term used to refer to the people in Metropolitan Cyprian Senate. Well, that monk was wrong, obviously, because what greater proof is there than the fact they went into communion with Metropolitan Cyprian Senate? See, I was right. And as far as I'm concerned, this union vindicates what I said about these people. They really were Cyprianite in practice and belief, at least to some extent, they were. And I want to say a word to you, layman. If you believe in the GOC and you're a part of that church, according to GOC, so-called TOC, True Orthodox Church Standard and Criteria, you now have to leave them because they no longer represent or speak for or belong to the old calendar church because they're in communion with deposed schismatics. The canons say that if you are in communion with someone who has been deposed, you are deposed. So if you belong to the GOC under Archbishop Kalinikos and you claim to believe in GOC and the Old Calendars Movement, you now have to leave them. You have to cut off your will, distrust your thoughts, not listen to those clergy, and you have to leave them because they have fallen. They have fallen, people, by your own standard and criteria. And I want to say to you people in Hakna, the so-called Holy Orthodox Church in North America, which is not holy or orthodox, the GOC under Archbishop Kalinikos and now Metropolitan Demetrios here in America is not an option for you people. Your own book, The Struggle Against Ecumenism, which you wrote, talks about the history of Metropolitan Kipron of Philae, how he was deposed and all the canons he violated and how he gave communion to new calendars. So you can't be with the GOC now according to the canons and teaching of orthodoxy, you can't be with them. They're not an option for you. So, also, you, um, you, old calendar laity, I want you to understand that you need to defend what you perceive to be the orthodox church. I no longer recognize the old calendar's movement. It's just too divided, confusing, hypocritical. And there's corruption going on at high levels you know, there's slander, there's lies and dishonesty and, and hypocrisy. And you need to defend what you perceive to be Orthodox Church. When I was in the GOC, I defended them. I defended their ecclesiology because I saw that there were clergy who were disobeying the ecclesiology. You need to love the church. See, there's a thing called apologetics. And you have the right to defend 
Christianity. St. Jude tells us in verse 3, contend earnestly for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. I have statements written by Orthodox people and passages from Scripture teaching that you have the right to defend Christianity. See the link below in the description box. And you cannot just go along with this this uh, hypocrisy and disobedience. You have to defend what you perceive to be the Orthodox Church. Like I said, I no longer believe the Old Calendars Church to be, or, to be part of the Orthodox Church, but when I was with them, I did defend them. And I just saw there was too much hypocrisy. And you know, one time Father Maximus of New York, at Holy Ascension Monastery, he told me that they were gonna put an end to the practice of giving communion to New Calendars once and for all. And when he said that, I was thinking, yeah, right. That's what I was told before. Instead of this actually happening, they go into communion with Metropolitan Cape Brown's Senate. So this is hypocrisy. Maybe Father Maximus believed that. Maybe he was telling the truth or maybe he was just lying. I don't know. It's, it's hard to know with these people. You know, and one time Father Stephen Allen, GOC priest, told me that if I'm waiting for a time when all their clergy will stop giving com community to new calendars, I'll be waiting a long time. See, they never had it in their mind to stop this practice. Metropolitan Pilos never should have been made a bishop. He's just not the right material. So these are the facts, people. And I think that today there's a real lack of love for truth. People do not love truth enough. I think Generally speaking, we are soft, we are weak, we are spineless. We go with what's popular, what's socially acceptable because we were born into this new world order system. You and I were raised with the non-Christian concepts of religious tolerance, religious indifference, religious pluralism, modernism, secularism, humanism, materialism, ecumenism. So there's a real lack of love for truth today. And also I think that people have become desensitized to corruption and evil. It's so much in the media, in politics, in the world, on television. We see, see so much corruption and wickedness that people are desensitized to it. So if a bishop slanders another clergyman, people just don't care. You know, and in case you didn't know people, Metropolitan Pavlos slandered Father Gregory of Colorado when he was a priest in the GOC. He was in good standing in your church, Father Gregory, and he retaliated he actually, what he did was he expressed his voice, which he had the right to do, in objection. He objected to the idea of Metropolitan Paulos, known as that time as Father Paul, getting consecrated. And Father Gregory was right in what he said as far as GOC, TOC criteria and standards are concerned. Paulos never should have been made a Metropolitan, never should have been made a bishop. And instead of Paulos appreciating Father Gregory's zeal for the GOC and defense of the GOC, Pablo slandered him. He slandered him. Okay? And Christians don't do things like this. This is ABCs of Christian spirituality. You do not slander people. Just because you may not like someone or something they have said about you doesn't mean you have the right to slander them. And Pavlos and Bishop Christodoulos are maintaining the slanderous lie to this day. Which tells me they have little or no fear of God. They have the nerve of the audacity to go to communion regularly, suffering from the delusion that they're somehow going to become sanctified, even though they're maintaining sin and slander in their life. And this tells me that these people have a low view of the sacrament of communion. When you go to communion, you have to be in a worthy state, you know. You cannot go to communion with sin and slander in your life. This tells me these people have little or no fear of God. This is corrupt people. So if you have been a member of the GOC, you now have to leave them because they are fallen by their own standard and criteria, their own rules. They are fallen. And if you're in the Hakana, you cannot go into c communion with the G GOC. I mean, you cannot be a part of them because they're with the Senate in resistance. And if you belong to mainstream orthodoxy, you cannot commune in a GOC church. There's rules in orthodoxy. We are forbidden to receive communion 
in schismatic churches. There's rules, okay? So see the information below in the description box. Stay away from the GOC under Archbishop Clinicals, Metropolitan Dimitrios, Metropolitan Pavlos. Stay away from these people. They were hypocrites. They're disobedient. They're frauds. And I now believe they are schismatics. I put up with them for a long time, hoping that they were going to repent of their 2002 encyclical violations, and they never did. And I believe that these are signs from God that this is not the church, people. God protected me from those people because had I joined one of their monasteries, I now would have, have to have left. I now would have to leave because of their union with the thrice-deposed uncanonical schismatics, the Senate in Resistance. All the clergy in the Senate in Resistance are deposed. According to your own criteria and standards, they're all deposed. None of them are valid. They do not have apostolic succession. If the canons of orthodoxy are true, the book, The Struggle Against Ecumenism, written by Hockne, lists those canons. Metropolitan Caprion, his senate is built on a violation of the canons of orthodoxy. You cannot be with those people. And also, according to traditional and historical GOC ecclesiology, Metropolitan Caprion taught heresy. He was a heretic. So, according to your own standards and rules, he was a heretic. He's deposed three times. He formed a schism, and his sin is built on a violation of the canons. These are the facts according to the book, The Struggle Against Ecumenism. So you people have to leave the GOC. You have to stay away from the sin and resistance, and you need to leave, actually. You need to leave all the old calendarist groups because they're, I think they're just political, ideological groups who want uncritical fans. They are not the Orthodox Church. They're political. I thank you for listening. See the information below in the description box.